and welcome back. This video is going to be my entry into Emma Rickson's tool making competition. Um, over the last sort of several years she's managed to secure some really good prizes for running the tool competition and this year she's got three prizes, three excellent prizes again. Um, if you want to see some of the other videos of people who have entered, if you type in the search bar hashtag TMC2020 and that will list all those videos and you can see those. So anyway, we'll get on with my entry. My entry is going to be an optical centre punch and I'll show you the drawing up close in a minute. So we've got to make some tooling first to actually make some of, the, some of this tool. So we'll get underway and we'll start off on the lathe and then we'll move across to the miller machine. The centre punch has got three main components. We've got the brass body on the left there, which I'm going to mill a rope knurl into. And the scallops you can see on the sides are going to be machined with a hand graver. And next we have the acrylic rod, which is going to act as our um, looking glasses, if you like, which I'm going to machine a lens into the top so we can magnify the crosshairs which are going to be in the bottom so we can plant this exactly on a crosshairs of a drawing or somewhere where we want to centre punch and then lastly we've got a silver steel centre punch uh, made from obviously silver steel and then we're going to harden it and then temper it so anyway the first job is to make the knurling wheel and then we'll have a look at the rope knurl Well, I'm really happy how that come out. So that's the Nerlum wheel. So what I'll do now is I'll heat treat that and then temper it back and then that'll be that finished and then we'll make a mount for that to sit in to go onto the lathe. So next we need to mount the cutting wheel into something similar to this setup here, but obviously we're only making a single arm because we're going to be using a force pull, you know, like a force tool. So same sort of thing as this one, except for we're just going to have a single wheel and then we're going to mount that in here. So we'll get this roughed out to shape on the shaper and then we'll Put this in the mill and we'll do the cut in here for the wheel to sit into. Although that rope knurl wheel worked really well, the pitch on it was just too coarse and it would have been alright on a larger part but because that was on a reasonably small part it just didn't look right. So here I am remaking the knurling wheel but this time I'm just going to cut a straight knurl um, using the tap and then I'm going to put the tool in the tool holder at an angle and then that will give me my rope look. We've got our piece of brass all chucked up, so what we'll do first is we'll just rough that down to size, drill a hole and put the centre drill in. Um, we'll probably we'll need to support this end because we're going to be knurling here and then obviously knurling up the part here. So I'll show you on the plan here. So we've got a overall diameter of 31 mil, so we'll rough it out to that first, and then we'll lay some die on, and then we'll mark out these various machinings here.
So for the punch, I'm going to use a piece of silver steel and I'm going to put a 90 degree point on. And the reason for silver steel is obviously it can be heat treated. So what we'll do, we'll put the point on, we'll cut it off to length, which in this case will be 50 mil, and then we'll heat treat it and then temper it back and that will give us a nice strong point. Well that's the main body all finished and the punch itself which has been hardened, uh, heat treated and then tempered back. So that fits in there nicely. So the last thing we've got to have a look at is uh, machine this piece of acrylic rod to produce a lens and obviously a crosshairs in the bottom. But I want to not just have it as a lens to look in, I want to actually magnify the crosshairs at the bottom so you can see it a lot more clearly when you put this onto like a, onto a drawer and where you need to center punch. So I've been online and had a look at the shape of the lens for what, the length of rod what we've got. So at 45 mil, we need to have a focal point from the top right to the bottom and that focal point will hit at dead on 45. If you shape the lens wrong, your focal point will be out and that will probably be blurred or you know that just won't be a sharp image. So, what I'll do is I'll show you the laser because um, when I built the laser obviously that's all controlled by mirrors and a focus focal lens at the end. So I'll show you that lens and um, that will be something what we're going to replicate on the end of here. So I thought I'd take the lens out and actually show you what a lens looks like. So what we've got here we've got a flat bottom and as you can see it's a convex lens. And that's what we've got to replicate onto the end of here. Obviously, um, this lens contains um, special properties for using, you know, using with a laser beam. So anyway, so yeah, so that's what the lens looks like. So what we'll do now is we'll get this in the lathe and we'll start to machine that. So that's the sight piece all now finished and we've got a nice tight fit. So the next job is to put the crosshairs on the bottom and obviously they've got to be exactly 90 degrees to one another. I've got no way of indexing this head so what I'm going to do or what I've come up with is I'll bolt a um, one, two, three block to the side here. And then I'll use the old favorite angle machine. So we'll set that to zero degrees there. So we'll set that at zero there. 
and then we'll just bring our marking tool across And then we'll swing this round 90 degrees. close enough there All right and then we'll just mark that side and that's our crosshairs done Well that's all the parts made for the optical centre punch. So we've got the main body and then we've got the optical um, viewfinder with the crosshairs in the bottom which slots in there and obviously the punch for them punching our um, centre punch hole. So how this works is the acrylic rod absorbs light and it absorbs light and allows you to see right down to the bottom even though this is obviously dark when it's sitting on something it does absorb light which I'll try and show you how that works but also because of the lens what we've shaped in the top it also magnifies the crosshairs so it's a lot clearer to actually see and get you know get right dead center on the lines when you're trying to punch but anyway I'll try I'll bring you in closer and we'll try and see if we can see down the center there Right, I've got the camera set up really close to the drawing and I can't quite get it to focus because it's too close. But as you can see across the bottom there, we've got a dimension of 10 millimeters and we're gonna be bringing the center punch into this corner here. So we'll move the center punch across. And just focus, oh, here we go. So in the top left there, you can just see the corner of that drawing and then we'll bring the center punch across and now we're sitting dead on that corner. So if I just twist the, the crosshairs, you can see that where that corner is. The um, camera on the phone isn't that good. It's um, distorting the crosshairs. When you actually look through the viewfinder with the naked eye, that does look a lot better and it's a lot sharper image. But anyway, that gives you an idea of how, you know, how magnified it is and how easily we can get dead in the center of that corner, you know, because we've got the thickness of the lines, but you can see how we would achieve, you know, accuracy there. All right, so we'll just put some layout die on the piece. We've got a piece of aluminium here, which we'll do. Like so. And then we'll mark our cross on there. And hopefully you can see that okay. I'll zoom in a bit. Right, and then what we do now is we put this on here and then we line the crosshairs up with that cross. You have to excuse my head for a minute. Like so, and then swap for the punch. 
and hit the punch. And that's it. And as you can see, we're dead in centre of that cross. Well, that's it for this video. So, I'd like to just uh, give a shout out to some people. So, thanks to Emma for obviously running the competition. Um, if you want to find other people's entries, just uh, type in hashtag TMC2020 and that will list all the videos what people have made. Um, the two judges is going to be Emma and Stephen Lang, and the prize donors are Shadow Dog 500. Tommy Gun Machine and, and Stefan Gottswinter. So if you just type those into the browser, you'll, you'll soon find their channels and that. So anyway, so thanks Emma, and thanks for running the competition again this year, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.